Newborn screening is internationally recognized as an essential preventative healthcare practice. It involves testing newborns for treatable genetic conditions that may not be apparent at birth. These conditions can progress rapidly to severe illness, disability and even death. While the incidence of any one of these conditions is quite low, the combined incidence may be as high as one in a thousand. Newborn screening is practiced by the entire developed world and by many developing countries. Unfortunately, South Africa has no official newborn screening policy and therefore no national screening program. The Newborn Screening Laboratory at the Potchefstroom campus of the Northwest University does however offer this invaluable service and has saved many South Africans from disability and death. The following video tells a story of three South African families that were affected by isovaleric acidemia, which is one of the conditions that is screened for in the newborn screening program. If you're watching this video and you're expecting a baby or you know somebody that is expecting, then I urge you to consider newborn screening and also to spread the word. For more information, you can speak to your pediatrician, you can contact your local pathology group, or you can contact us directly. Remember, screening today will ensure a safer tomorrow. After three years of marriage, we decided to have a baby, well planned, um, excited, and Devon was born. He was born on the 19th of April, 85. And then after a week, um, I noticed that he was um, a bit sleepy and he didn't want to drink and he skipped some feedings. The doctor said he should be admitted, he lost too much weight. And then um, on Mother's Day he died. The influence of a kid that's not normal is immense. But you must remember, he was our first child. After birth, holding him for the first time, it was, you know, that feeling of awe and it's such a miracle but after we got home and we realized that you know something was major he was still struggling to 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 feed he just didn't want to drink at all the, the ambulance came and they, they put him in there and we could follow and then they booked him in and we sat and waited until they put all the machines and things on sure the emotions going through is it's actually disbelief and you can't believe this is happening. The doctor said she explained the whole enzyme thing and his body can't break down the protein to use it. And um, they can't do anything for him more because he's, he's already declared brain dead and his kidneys aren't working and soon his heart will also give in. So we must just decide when we want to switch off the machines. Afterwards, when I read, you know, I was just looking for, for someone similar who went through something similar and, you know, the baby also died and, and then it's all American websites and there's just none of them die because they were screened. Even if, if the baby, let's say that I'm carrying now, has IVA, they wouldn't recommend, you know, it an abortion or anything because the baby would be able to have quite a normal life. It was quite normal uh, when I felt pregnant after Devon that I was quite anxious with my pregnancy with Donnie. He was about two and a half years old when he started, one day he started to vomit 
and the pediatrician admitted him because he um, he was dehydrated totally. It was about 42 times that this has happened regularly and with no diagnosis. Back in Pretoria, the pediatrician consulted uh, another pediatrician that is uh, a specialist in metabolic disorders and diseases. He decided to send a urine sample to Poch University for uh, further analysis. And much to my surprise, for the first time, we found out that there was a name for this disease which Dani had. Isovaleric acidemia um, at first was a very technical disease to me, which only means that um, he had no natural enzymes to break down protein that was described to me. And from there on, things started to get better for Dani. After Dani was treated with the correct medicine, the time span between episodes were longer and he started to have a more quality life and he was such a delight. He was um, eating much better. Donnie went to Northwest University, the exact university which diagnosed him and treated him successfully. He got his honours degree in political science and then on the sport side he achieved his um, provincial colours in volleyball. I'm so relieved that Dani was treated correctly, successfully as an isovaleric acidemia patient. And that I could look back and see the success that he has become on each and every level of life. You must remember, if you are disabled, it's for the rest of your life. So my problem is, is at first some stage in my life I worked very hard because I tried to provide for him not until I'm dead, but until he dies. So I must provide not for my next 50, 40 years, but rather for 80 years until he dies. It's a small price to pay the dietary adjustments too. Yeah, no, it's nothing. Yeah, no, that's nothing. I mean, if he wait said to me uh, on the first day, you know, you must eat uh, 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 rice for the rest of your life, but then your kid will be normal. And I will say uh, that's nothing. The difference between Janka and Krista is that Janka uh, was diagnosed very early, within a few days after, after birth, and she's, she's got a normal life. She progressed well at school, she is now in grade 11. She's good in music. I mean, it's like a normal kid. Nobody even knows. So that's a, a, a big difference is, is quality of life, everything, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, she, Janka can get married. She can go on with her life. She, she plan on studying. I could only stress how important it is and how simple it is to have a test done with a newborn baby. Really? peace of mind just with a prick on the hill and um, the comfort to know that might there be a problem it could be solved and it will give you peace of mind and I'm so grateful today after my boy to see him being raised as an adult and he's so healthy I would, the first thing I would say to a pregnant mom is scream as soon as you can because the cost is so very little. The discomfort to the baby is not mentionable. And, uh, but the, what you can save yourself from is unbelievable. It's you know, it's safe and easy and, you know, it gives you that peace of mind. Should the baby not be ill, then, you know, you're the lucky one. Should the baby be ill, it, they can be treated. And, it's, you know, it's early enough to, to be able to do that and there won't be any damage. And, you know, it can, it can save a life. <laughs>